welcome everyone uh good morning first of all it's about to be good afternoon and the region i am right now this is good night for me because it's 11 pm so uh we'll be starting our session uh first of all the topic of the day is uh, what are we really missing in the web applications nowadays um a short and quick introduction about myself who i am and what i do uh, my name is uh, mirza burhan Beg, and i'm working currently as a threat analyst uh, and red teamer uh, in a bank in riyadh saudi arabia so the bank name is riyadh bank itself so uh, it's a government semi-government bank uh my career starts from 2013 as a bug bounty hunter as you can see I've been acknowledged by Google, Microsoft, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, uh, the top-notch companies. And uh, right now, uh, today, I did some work on the web hacking as well for the bug, nonetheless. So I'm OSCP certified, uh, EWPTA, and other certification that includes my credentials for mobile and network as well. Okay, so I've been working for the financial mostly, health and the business entities and the government sectors as well, and some other sectors. So this is my quick introduction. Uh, <clears throat> Bug Bounty Hunter turned to be our threat analyst. Okay, so the question is, what are we, uh, what are the current and the critical web application flaws nowadays? And what are the major changes in the OWASP top 10? I'm sure most of you have heard about OWASP top 10. This is a baseline, or uh, we can say, for the testers for the web applications, and they can test their web applications according to the checklist that is provided by the OWASP. Uh, from the 2017, if we carry it out 2020, 21, uh, so we can see there been major changes in the latest update. Uh, why? Because the injections were the first thing very critical thing in 2017 till now until unless we have a new baseline and the framework that uh, we use for the testing so now the major changes i'm not gonna uh, dive into the changes but the main important part which i'll be talking about in this presentation will be that the bug that is moved from a5 to a1 that is a broken access control that include, includes your session management, that includes your IDORs, that includes your privilege escalations, and what's and what not. Major change has been done in 2021, and we have to see why we need a change. So, why there is a need for a change? Maybe, uh, that's a very normal question for everyone. Everyone evolves, right? the life, the human, the P, the technology, the security, everything needs to be updated. Nothing is perfectly defined uh, to carry out the change. So that's why we need a change. Then the most important thing, the thing, the topic, the pointer that I'll be discussing further is something that your static scanners cannot detect. How and why? Oh, we'll discuss that. But static and dynamic scanners, I meant to say that you have heard about the NetSparker, Equinetix, AppScan, and there are a ton of other uh, scanners that are used for the web scanning. So the vulnerability, the issue that I'll be discussing today is not able, uh, the scanners cannot able to detect that. Why? Uh, we'll discuss that. So. I'll be taking one example. The injections are protected. That includes your XML entity injections as well, your SQL injection, your server side template injection, and some other injections as well. So we will be just discussing this only SQL injection thing for now for this uh, specific slide. Uh, how they are protected? My main question is that, that there is something that is not protected, but there is a thing that is uh, most critical in 2017 till yet, uh, that is injection, that is protected. 
how? Uh, because the frameworks, the libraries, and the plugins that are created by the developers for the developers. So we have a multiple ton of libraries of .NET, Python, Java, what's and whatnot. So we, we can use those libraries for the input validations as well, right? If you are a programmer and you're listening to this. So uh, if you're a programmer, you can Google and you can use a secure library for input validations for the .NET as well and for every any, any other language, right? So these are already protected by the community for the community so the main thing is we can use multiple things multiple approaches to secure that the frameworks nowadays uh, and the browsers mostly nowadays are very intelligent that if you try to do xss cross site stripping attack so the browser uh, will not bypass your query or there are some certain plugins that will not bypass your query so you have to uh, make an input validation from the front end and the back end as well right so if you talk about the other vulnerabilities there are thousands of vulnerabilities that can be discovered and that can be talked about uh, that how a framework is protecting that but what we are talking about right now is business logic flaws you heard me right the business logic flaws broken access control is uh, uh, I, I, broken so what is our business logic flaw what are business logic vulnerabilities so we will be discussing a very very small example for the business logic and a sequence that a business user or us use to access or deliver certain things oh my internet connection is stable. It's perfectly fine now, I guess. Yep. So what are business logic flaws? Uh, following a sequence for a user or a business, we call it a business logic flaw. Uh, for the sake of the example, we take the login example for the Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, anything. Uh, first step, uh, go to the website. Second step, put your credential, that is your username and the password. Third step, log in and you will be redirected to the dashboard. Then you can move to the friend request or messages or something else like that. The sequence is A, B, C. You go to the website, you put the credentials and you enter into the dashboard. What if I can break the sequence from A to C, skipping the B part, which is providing your credentials? That's right you are thinking in the right direction because i'm talking about a cross-site scripting attack in this situation if we steal the cookies of the insecure website or we business logic as well but that is a systematic way of bypassing the business logic but what if the sequence itself breaks we'll discuss because i have a lot of examples for that that i have encountered in my professional capacity while doing um and i have the right to uh, discuss that so how how these vulnerabilities the business logic flaws arises it's a total negligence of the developers because why coding thousand of lines they are uh, confident enough that they are programming it perfectly but yeah they are programming it perfectly but what give you an example for the dotnet programmers if someone is listening in the dotnet capacity the dotnet programmers we have the controllers right we have the views we have the models what if i have checked every controller every controller of my website but what if I have left one controller unchecked for the privilege escalation for the IDOR indirect object references or in bindings? The most important and critical thing is session binding. So when we are talking about it, anyone can access that specific controller without any session and with the, all the data in it. For example, if I search for something uh, while I'm logging, so I capture the request in the burp, I pass it to the repeater, I click on the repeat button. But what if I click on the logout and then I try to search it again with the burp uh, repeater? 
in actual in in reality it should not bring me the results it should say that you are logged out please log in again but what if the results come up and i can see all the results in my search that is my business logic flaw that happens why because of the negligence of the developers but uh what is the impact of the business logic flaws uh, a very 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 disastrous basically if i tell something uh, go to bug bounty hunting program any bug, bug bounty hunting program you'll know observe the most highly paid bugs are the business logic flaws where a user is uh, where user try to break the sequence and they bypass the system so they are highly paid there was a guy i'm not sure about his name but he bypassed the OTP of Instagram a uh, few months or uh, I'm not sure, in a year ago or two years ago. Uh, he chained a proxy chain. He changed the IP addresses simultaneously and he, he applied some tricks. So maybe uh, I'm not sure about the process, but he bypassed the OTP of the Instagram. The Instagram paid him 20 grand, 20,000 US dollars as a bug bounty. And again, they fixed that. After some time, that person again bypassed the OTP of the Instagram once again. So best of luck and good luck with them. They paid him 15,000 more in his bucket. So in total, if you talk about 35,000 US dollars for a single vulnerability, why? Because the team was unable to patch it properly again. So this is the power of the business logic flaw. If you are able to capture all the data that reside in your website somehow, and it bypasses a sequence. So you have the critical data in your hands. Now, if you talk about the common vulnerabilities in the business logic flaws, I'm using the short form for the uh, business logic flaws, BLF. So what are the few vulnerabilities and the misconceptions? The misconception number one, I'll be talking about uh, unevenly over here. Trusted user won't always remain trustworthy. And the second thing, users won't always supply mandatory input. The, the main example for this, someone asked me about my uh, name and I insert the uh, digits in that or a special character in that. In actual, it should block my request from the front end to the back end. But the problem is if that is bypassed from the front end, that's perfectly fine. You can uh, capture the request in the verb and you can alter it and you can supply whatever you want to do. That's perfectly fine from the front end. But if you talk about the back end of the server, so the back end of the server should be processing and should be checking your data was is coming from the front end. So now the user won't always supply mandatory input. At the code, you, uh, if someone is asking me my name, if I uh, curly brackets or the square brackets and I put the two multiplied by two, I actually emptying the server side template injection so it should not bypass it or it should not it should directly say please do not use special characters or the digits in this field but uh we think that user will always do whatever we ask them number uh, the user won't always follow the intended sequence that i always say that if you follow the sequence and you try to break the sequence that is the main part of the business logic flaws if, uh, forward uh the main thing that i want to discuss over here is that i have identified a very critical vulnerability and a financial uh, fraud management system that is used overall in the globe with the uh in the banking industry i must say the financial industry because they have to check the fraud uh, management or all the other things so come to the uh, coming to the point uh what happens over here uh i have published uh, uh that uh, report to the oracle and they have published the cd for that that's a number if you want to check it out you can go to this specific number okay uh, the main thing is, uh, if you notice on the left hand side, left hand side is screen. If you can see my screen, there is a user analyst EP, right? That is uh, my analyst EP, and there is analyst MY. There are two analysts. One is highly privileged, and second one is low privileged user that can only see the reports. But the high privileged user can also see all the data 
all the logs, all the transactions in the system. So what I did, I just captured the data from the front end uh, that is going to the back end on the, from the burp and I intercept the server response as well. I copy all the requests if you want to do a bug bounty or if you want to check a business logic flaw. Just uh, follow my one, uh, um, what you can say, instruction or a guideline that capture each and every request that server and system generates and put them in a notepad file. One, two, three, no matter how many files you generate, just copy and paste all the responses and all the requested because you don't know which one will be bypassed. So what I did actually, I just captured the request from a high privilege user that back into a burp suit that's the second screen i put uh, in a burp suit on the left hand side if you can see that the server is responding me with all the critical logs all the critical data and to search my new alerts my date on which date i have done that oh, and you can request anything so that was a critical vulnerability in an application just because of tempering the parameters, just bypassing the session and the session handling and the session binding issues. We can uh, see all the data that a high can after the said that I'm involved in the financial industry and the banking industry overall. So. Uh, the second in vulnerability that I want to discuss over here is that uh, there was a financial institution uh, and there's a mobile application for that. Uh, in the uh, From the left, we start. First of all, the screen, mobile screen, you know, uh, username and password. I put the username and password. Second screen, they send an OTP uh, on my mobile phone. I received an OTP. What I did, I just put an invalid OTP. The result is invalid, right? But what actually happens, the first thing I did, I log in into my application and capture all the requests. Then I move that request as a privileged user. How, how, how did I that? So I capture all the positive responses from the server 200 and all the positive responses that comes when I put or insert or put insert the correct OTP. I captured the request that server is sending. Then what I did, I that is the second vulnerability in the same application. If you put the username and password and you put the password invalid, let's say one, two, three, it says invalid password. Then it redirects you to the log. password and the login button it automatically logins you in the account on the right hand side of the screen if you can see that's my account uh, on the invalid password what happened in the application the application was checking just one failure of the otp on the next thing it bypassed the system so that's the second thing i did in my practical experience number third this is also a banking this is an internet banking at the same OTP bypass, I love to bypass OTPs, by the way. Uh, on the left-hand side, if you can see that is, uh, I put the username and password. The OTP as well. On the right-hand side, the upper image, uh, the highlighted, you can see OTP underscore text, and there's uh, digits. That's a legit OTP that I put. On the below, you can see a response in the request. I received, I captured this because that is my legit and the perfect response that I want from the server. Now I am saving that on a not, notepad file because uh, when I put the correct OTP, the server will respond like this. But how will it respond when I put the wrong username and password and replace this exact uh, field and the exact data with my verb suit. Now, if you can see on the left hand side, I put the uh, username and password correct. My OTP is wrong. Uh, on the center image, you can see provided OTP is incorrect. So the server is saying that your OTP is correct, but I have a request that will be 
by pass the system and uh, that is already a legit request from a server from a user to the server and server responding in a positive way so what i did i just copy that and paste it when the server is saying the otp is invalid i just remove that paste my post request or the get request and bypass the system on the right hand side you can see that the account is logged in so that's how i bypass three different financial applications and different aspects of it so the problem is uh, we are uh, reaching towards our end but we have to pretty design flaws this image has been taken from the port swagger the burp suit uh, developers so it explains this very very quickly an example is very easy that i bypass in the previous example in the mobile execution wherever i put the username and password wrong it bypass the otp so here we go the first attempt for the username and password first attempt user and password incorrect the second attempt the same the third attempt it bypass the system it bypass the system so what we can do uh, to secure that we have to bind the session and we have to bind the all the security keys and all the controllers to a specific session so whenever my web application tries to get a data from the database or the controller so it will check my session binding so i bypass a mobile application uh mobile application OTP with the help of this example, by the way. Okay, in the first example, in the first step, in the first slide, I said no dynamic and static analysis tool can detect the business logic. So where we have to go, what, what we can do to the automation part. So there is a plugin in the Burp suit, Auth Metrics, the, that's very easily available. You can repeat the workflows with different users, different work groups, and you can break the sequence as well of the web application you are using. So do check it out, the auth metrics. Uh, there are a ton of videos available, how to tune, how to configure your auth metrics, but this is something you need to use immediately for the business logic because you will give you two username and two passwords, one is privilege, one is high privilege, the high privilege data will be saved and it will be attacked by the low privilege that if you have a vulnerability. So if you are a developer and you are still listening to me, uh, for a source code, you have to mitigate it. Why, how? You have to identify where the controls are carried out, where they are not. If they are carried out somewhere, you have to bind a session, but there are no controls do not uh, bind the session or something else the control you want to do dividing and modeling the first of all understand understand the application understand the workflow the connections the data inputs outputs in short prepare a threat model and if you don't know about threat modeling just google and there are a ton of that will do a threat modeling for you uh, so analysis uh, of the controls you have to analyze that, do the analysis on the parameters coming from the server or going to the server. So these are the few things do you have to look into the source code to mitigate the attack. So the last thing, what is that? What you have to ask? These are the few things that you have to ask when you are working on a critical applications, uh, like when, how often, for how long. This question remind me for a bug that is a concurrent session as well. The people in the community knows the concurrent session bug. What is that? Two users can log in simultaneously in the same account. That's not a good uh, practice. Second thing, uh, when, how often, or for how long? You just close your browser for how long your session will be established. For example, if you talk about the financial application, your business data, your banking data, your application should log out itself after two or three minutes idle time, right? So these are the few questions you have to ask for uh, before implementation, before developing, and you have to carry out these things. One final tip from my side, if you are talking about the business logic flaws and you want to test it, go to the uh, account manager or the business owner, ask them for the two accounts. One is high privilege and one for the low privilege account. 
try to manipulate the request and see the response. And if the responses are changed and the responses are divided into multiple parameters, try to change a parameter one by one. So that's it from my side, uh, Salt Lake City. I hope you enjoyed and you learned new and the business logic flaws and if you're a bug bounty hunter do check out new pass the system sequence that's a pro tip for tonight or today so thank you very much everyone i hope you have a good time i'll see you soon thank you very much everyone